Hello everyone, welcome back to Electrified Outdoors. Today I'm going to have a quick video for you and we're going to talk about how to drive a Rivian or any electric vehicle for that matter and get maximum range. And this is not going to be a terribly long video, but it is going to be one that's going to give you a couple tidbits of information that's going to allow you to get the most range out of your electric vehicle. If you haven't already, remember to hit subscribe and then hit that notification bell so you get notified anytime we add new content. If you don't like us, you can always unsubscribe later. Also, folks, remember to hit that like button. It really helps us out. We really appreciate it. And it does help other people find quality content on YouTube. So one of the main things that's going to affect your efficiency in your EV is your tire pressure. Now, as a general rule, you want to check your tire pressure first thing in the morning after the vehicle's been sitting all night. And you're going to look in the door, the driver's side door jam, and in there you'll see the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure. Now, for the Rivian, it's kind of high. It's 48 PSI. I think Tesla's are 42 PSI. But having your vehicle inflated to the proper tire pressure is going to ensure that you're not losing efficiency and the vehicle will actually handle better as well. The other thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that your vehicle is on one pedal driving or high regen mode. Now in the Rivian, you tap on this screen here and we can see our brake regen is set to high. Other vehicles like Tesla don't have an adjustable setting for this, but many EVs do. So whatever EV you have, check your owner's manual and it'll tell you how to adjust the strength of the brake regen. The stronger the brake regen is, the more energy it's gonna put back into your battery and the more energy you put back into your battery, the further you're going to be able to go on a charge. Now, the next tip I have is regarding driving itself. You have the brake regen on high. You have your tire pressure set. If you have air suspension like we have in the Rivian and you're on the highway, you can set it to the low ride height or a lower ride height. That's going to put less clearance between the bottom of the vehicle and the ground, that's going to give you better efficiency. But when you're driving down the road, you're going to want to anticipate as much as possible. Now the way I anticipate is I try to avoid using the brake pedal. When you use the actual brake pedal, what you're doing is you're converting the energy that you use to get the vehicle moving back into heat. And the heat's not doing anything for you. It's definitely not putting the energy back into the battery. So we want to anticipate as much as possible. So if you know the light's red or if you know there's a stop sign up ahead, gradually slow the vehicle. This will allow the regen to slow the vehicle down and it'll put that energy back into your battery. The other thing that I do is I try to keep a good distance between my vehicle and the vehicle in front of me so that I don't have to panic stop. Because when you have to panic stop, you're going to have to use the friction brakes to do that. But if you have some distance between you and the guy in front of you, you're going to be able to let off the accelerator and let that one pedal driving brake regen slow the vehicle down and put that energy back into the battery. Another tip that I have for getting maximum efficiency, and it's not for everyone, but a big factor on the highway is the speed that you drive. So if you're driving on the highway and you're doing 65 or 70, your range and your efficiency are going to be dramatically higher 
than if you're on that same highway and you're doing 80 miles an hour. The faster you go on the highway, the more energy the EV is going to consume. And this confuses a lot of people because in an internal combustion vehicle, it's the opposite. You get your least fuel economy in the city and you get your best fuel economy on the highway. But even internal combustion, when you're on the highway and you're going very high rates of speed, they do get worse fuel economy. But nonetheless, an EV is the opposite. They get their best range in stop and go driving, mainly because when you're slowing down, you're putting that energy back into the battery and because you're going at a slower rate of speed usually. So there's nobody behind me, and so what I'm going to do is just gradually let off of the accelerator. And as I do that, the vehicle starts to slow down. And if I'm going to make this turn up here, I let off the accelerator. Now notice I'm not hitting the brakes at all. But when I let off the accelerator, the vehicle will almost slow to a stop. So I'm using that regenerative braking to put all that energy back into the battery so that I'm not losing it. Now the other suggestion I have is not preconditioning. Preconditioning the car is very useful on road trips so that you can get the maximum range when you set out. But if you're just driving 50 or 75 miles in a day, preconditioning is actually going to use more energy and you're not going to need the extra range that it's giving you. So my advice, unless you're going on a long road trip, is not to precondition the car. What do you guys think? What do you do to maximize your efficiency in your EV? Let us know down in the comments section. Also, if I missed anything, let me know down in the comments section what I missed. As always, folks, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified anytime we add new content. And thank you guys so much for watching.